Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be setting up the wiring and battery in our bullet train engine kit. For anybody that hasn't seen the first two videos, it will make a lot more sense. I highly recommend checking them out. The first thing I'm gonna do here is loosen the electrical box. So in last video, I mounted it too low, so it was hitting the spark plug. So we're just gonna tilt to the side so it's a little bit easier to work on the electronics. And always double check your work. I noticed I missed a bolt when installing this the first time. So I went ahead and quickly threw that on. Moving on to the controls. I'm just going to be taking this left grip off. Along with the kill switch and clutch lever. Something that definitely threw me off guard. Uh, if you take a look here, this is my voltage regulator off my... 1991 Bayou 300 and you can see it bolts directly up so there is parts for this engine you just have to find them and uh, it may not be listed as a bullet train part but here I'm just taking the throttle off and just cutting some zip ties up front moving on to the actual throttle housing itself I'm just going to take these two screws out here and once we get that out, we can install our cable. So here I'm just testing out the grip a little bit. One thing I did notice with this kit, and I'm not sure if it applies to all of them, is that the cable is super short. And if it weren't for my bike being a uh, kind of a race style where the bars are low, there's a good chance if you put this on like a cruiser or something, that throttle cable may be too short. So that's something I recommend for bike barriers to include a longer cable. Also, the quality of the switches on this little panel here appear to be just as good, if not better, as a real motorcycle. So I'm pretty happy with that. Something I did neglect, however, was the little set screw that goes on the actual handlebars themselves. So here I'm just using a paint marker, and we're going to drill a hole inside the handlebar so this thing doesn't move around. Now, if I can give you guys any tips when doing this, try not to jump up the sizes too much. And this is exactly what I did here. I started way too small. And then it moved up to a gigantic drill bit and it still worked but it's a little bit looser than i would like so when you guys are doing this just take it slow and don't do what i just did here also keep in mind there are front and rear screws so one is longer than the other but i'm just going to slide the grip into place and then i'm going to install the housing Something I did notice once I screwed it down on these specific bars, I think they're a little bit smaller than your normal bicycle bars because every type of grip that I put onto this, it still was loose. So I just built it up with some electrical tape to accommodate the size difference. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my two yellow wires and we're going to hook those up. What I recommend doing is peeling back the insulation and then connecting them metal on metal and then putting them back over top. Next, we're gonna take our blue and white wire. We're gonna put those together. Then we're gonna take the black and red wires. They're just a single connector. And we're gonna stick those together. And then what we have left over is our green one. So we're just gonna shove that in like that. And don't worry so much about tucking the wires for now because we still have to get the rest of the harness hooked up. So here's what I did there. Just a little bit of a closer view. So for the rest of the harness, it's pretty simple. You can see I have a little fuse on there. We're just going to ignore that for now. So what we're going to do is hook up our blue wire right there. Then we're going to go to the green one. We're going to plug that in. Once you get that hooked up, we're going to take the wire coming off the coil. And we're going to hook it up to the red and green coming off the throttle. And a little mistake here that's easy to make is if you push it on, that little tab might go up and over the little connector. So you want to make sure you push it in the right way. Then we're going to take our orange and yellow, and that's going to correspond with the solenoid itself. So those wires coming off there, plug those in just like that. Next, we're going to bolt on our two solenoid wires. So you may notice that it's not directional. You can put them either way because all it's doing is crossing it over to start it. So I actually had to move the red up a little bit because the black wasn't long enough to fit on the top. So you're going to have to play around with a little bit. It depends on your situation, where you mount the box, stuff like that. In my case, this is how I had to install it. 
Just FYI, you can't really fit a ratchet wrench in here, unfortunately. So I just had to use the open end part of the wrench. Also in the future, expect many riding videos with this engine. We are definitely going to be putting it to the test. I would also recommend working on the electrical box first before you move to the battery as working on electronics with a live system is very dangerous and you could result in seriously injuring yourself, you know, shocking yourself, sparks flying everywhere and uh, gas and sparks don't mix. So it's definitely worthwhile being safe with this kind of stuff. So here I am just reinstalling the electrical box. I settle on putting it towards up the frame a little more. I think it looks better. Now, if you want a quick, honest opinion, what I think of this engine, I think for the person that wants the features it has, it's definitely worth the money. Um, there's going to be much cheaper options out there. They're going to be much faster. But sometimes it's not all about going fast. It's about being reliable as well and dependable. So with this kind of engine here, a lot of people may argue, oh, there's more things, cause more problems, etc. But in my opinion, the parts are pretty heavily built. And things like the pull starter, you're not going to even use all the time anyways. So I think it's a very utilitarian style of engine. And uh, we're definitely going to see how it holds up over time. But if, if it fits your bill, you know, I'm not going to say it's cheap. But if it fits your bill, I would definitely go for it as it's a very nice engine. Just gonna run my throttle cable through here. Um, this little front plastic here is actually off of 110. And I've gotten so quick with installing these throttles, like guys, literally five seconds, watch this. Luckily, I didn't run into any problems with actually like mounting this engine into this frame. So if you're looking to price out building this whole thing, you know, ordering this exact frame and engine, they both pair really well together. The only thing that kind of got me skeptical was how is this battery going to mount? Because think about it, the fact that it's super low towards the ground really gets me like worried because if anything hits this thing, it's going to blow up. But the exhaust in front, luckily, should protect it from anything, you know, causing damage to it. And the fumes from the exhaust shouldn't really bother it because it's inside a case. So where it may not look safe, it should be fine. But what I would really recommend if you're daily commuting or want something that's going to be better in the snow and stuff, like less prone to corrosion, is actually purchase like a little rack or something, and then you could put it on there and extend the wires. I think that would be much more reliable in my opinion, but I don't really ride my bikes in the winter. It's not going to be a problem for me. So I'm just going to use a factory mount and see how it does. But I will say I did have to actually bend it a little bit because when I fully installed it, it was rubbing on my chain ring. So what I did is I just basically used brute force and just bend it a little bit. But um, here I am just using the old rag joint pieces. Well, I shouldn't say old, they're brand new, but just using those as kind of like shims because the battery I got from my Canadian tire is actually too small. So I'm just gonna have to make up some room. This is kind of one of those safety warnings I want to throw in the video. So from this point onward, the electrical system is live. Um, the ground wire isn't hooked up, obviously, but if that ground wire touches anything, aka I've already done it, you may uh, cause some sparks. So just be well aware of that happening and uh, proceed with caution. But these little brackets here, what the best thing you can do is loosen one bolt and take it right out so you can bend it around and make things work. And the battery alone sent me back $109. So if you're buying your own battery, it's definitely not cheap. And getting it directly from BikeBerry might be the best thing to do as uh, it'll save you some money there. But I'm just going to be installing the front bracket and I'm going to get some flack for this in the comments. But this is how I mounted it. So I just used a heavy duty zip tie and I'm just putting it up over the frame. Reason I couldn't use the one it came with is because my down tubes, unfortunately, a little bit bigger than your standard bike because it's a heavy built frame. So I just had to uh, use a heavy duty zip tie. It's It works, it's really freaking solid because once I tighten everything down, it actually held really well. So no complaints there. Um, would a metal bracket be better? Sure, but I'd argue that 
there's a higher chance of it actually shearing off. So this is going to do just fine. Here's that ground wire I was talking about. A little tip so it doesn't spark on you is just to turn the ignition off. So put the little switch in the off position. Time to hear it run for the first time. Here's me doing a completely cold start on the engine itself. So this is many, many hours after running and lo and behold, it turns right on.